Hi, I'm Jared Brown, Australian expat financial planner based here in Singapore. Thank you very much for tuning into my video today. What I'd like to share with you in this video are some of the key reasons why I chose to leave Australia and why I don't plan on returning to work in Australia anytime soon. Now, let me be clear, this is not a dig at Australia. I still love my country. My family is all in Australia. I love them very much and I obviously want to spend time with them, but I want to share with you why I chose to leave and why I choose to continue living and working in Singapore. So for anyone who's considering uh, taking a job or starting a business or relocating their investments to Singapore, I hope that this video gives you some of the insights as to why you might want to continue uh, with that thought and put that into action. So let's dive right in. So let's start with the first and most obvious one. It is the tax rates. Personal income tax rates in Australia are just shy of 50%. Now, in very simplistic terms, that means that for half a year, you're basically working for the Australian government. In Singapore, the top personal tax rate currently sits at 22%, with the view that that might be lifted to 23 or 24 in due course. Now be very mindful that if you're earning three to $400,000, you're very likely to be paying a personal income tax rate of between 15 and 20%. A far cry from the Australian personal income tax rate that starts at basically above $180,000. So naturally a huge difference there. The other big differences when it comes to tax rates, are we have a corporate tax rate in Singapore of just 17% compared to Australia, which is 30. If you're a small business in Australia, it's 28.5. So still a long way from Singapore's tax rates. But what is even more important is that in Singapore, we have a capital gains tax rate of zero. We have a dividend tax rate of zero. So naturally that allows you to accumulate wealth to accelerate your financial plans so much faster than if you're living and working in, in Australia. The second reason I chose to leave Australia is this tall poppy syndrome issue. In Australia, it is often viewed that if you're successful, if you're working too hard, you must be doing something wrong. And it seems very unique to Australia. As soon as we get out of the country, whether it be Asia, the United States, Europe, it disappears. In these countries, we want to learn from the successful people, find out what they're doing and work out how we can replicate it. But in Australia, we seem to have this tall poppy issue, which just does not exist outside of the country. So that is a bit of a breath of fresh air and naturally why we choose to continue living and working outside of the country. The third reason I choose to live and work in Singapore is to be surrounded by like-minded professionals. Most Australians who've decided to live in Singapore or to move to Singapore is to progress their career, start a business, invest. Everyone here is largely here to really get ahead. Whether it be in their personal life or their professional life, naturally it is just about progressing through, through their goals and to get to where they want to be that much faster. Now in Australia, obviously there are some great people who are choosing to really push ahead with their goals, but naturally that is just not not everyone, not the case for all people in Australia. So in Singapore, it's a bit of a different environment. And that naturally gives us the energy, the drive to continue to basically push ahead to achieve our own goals and naturally a good incentive to stay here in Singapore. The fourth key reason that I choose to live, stay in Singapore is safety. Now in Singapore, you can be out and Touch wood, I've never had any issues in Singapore and long may that continue. You can be out at all hours of the night, the morning, the day and never have any concerns about your safety. If you're a single woman working, sorry, walking home at night, catching a train, you can be assured that you will be perfectly safe. And again, touch wood, obviously we can't guarantee these things, but we've never really had any cause for concern here in Singapore. Now, obviously it is unique to this country. 
It is not the case for all countries, I'm sure, but naturally an attraction to Singapore. You have young children or family in Singapore, it is very attractive from a safety aspect, particularly when we see a lot of the headlines in the Australian news. The fifth key reason that I choose to live and stay in Singapore is to explore new cultures, meet new people. Singapore is a bit of a melting pot for all nationalities of people looking to get ahead in their career and their personal lives. It is one of the best places for different nationality when it comes to food, dining experiences, and one of the key reasons that we love it. It's a very easy place to make friends with people from all over the world, and given the transient nature of Singapore, and by that I mean most people who are expats here might come here for two or three years, they might go, then go home to their own country, they might then go somewhere else, but what you end up with is a network of people that you've grown close with all over the world. And naturally that means that there's potentially some free accommodation when you go on holiday. So a great opportunity for a lot of people to experience something new and develop a bit of a global network of friends. The sixth and final benefit that I want to highlight in this video when it comes to life in Singapore is the ability to travel. Changi Airport, I would have to say, is the best in the world that I've ever experienced and I'm sure that that will remain true for the rest of my life. We can land in the airport and be at home with our suitcases in about 45 minutes. It's not because there's no one flying into Singapore, obviously. The airport is always busy. It's just incredibly efficient. If you want to take a weekend trip to Thailand or Malaysia or Vietnam or wherever else it may be, even to Europe, there are flights all the time it's very easy to get out, it's very inexpensive, and naturally a great place to travel from. We see a lot of Australian expats looking to experience Asia for two or three years, and Singapore being a great place to do it from. Taking a posting, relocating with their job, progressing in their career, and the ability to explore most of Asia while they're here, it is naturally a great opportunity. Now in this video, I've shared a lot about why I choose to remain living and working in Singapore, and I fully expect that those reasons will remain true. But as the saying goes, I still call Australia home and still fully intend to return to Australia in due course. For many, many reasons. Our wide open spaces, the fresh air, our great work-life balance, the wonderful dining, the multicultural experience of Australia, and of course, most importantly, family. And by that I mean my own family, and of course my wife's family, all being in Australia, and naturally just family in general. The work-life balance of life in Australia is really second to none, and a wonderful experience. I hope this video shed a bit of light into why I chose to both leave Australia, but also importantly, choose to continue working in Singapore. If you have any questions at all, drop me a note in the comments. Feel free to reach out to me via email, WhatsApp, phone. More than happy to have a chat. Please remember to subscribe. Thank you very much for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you next time.